This is Fred Breaker from Fred Toys Fighting. I'm joined with the first time ever. It's always nice when I get to interview new people for the first time. I'm joined by Alfie Sharman from The Zone. Alfie, thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. It's good to meet you. I've seen you around, obviously, for over two years now and longer with the X Series. And uh, yeah, we've never had a chance to talk. So good to see you. Good to be here. Excited for the next hour or two. Should be good. Yeah, I mean, uh, for, uh, press, conference day, press conference days are going to be long, quite long days. Yeah. But then I guess all the fighters do their media, do their face offs, and yeah. The work gets done on the on the camera front, but uh, for your position at Design, for the people who don't know, what do you do at Design? So I'm vice president of marketing at Design. I've been at Design for six years. I've been in this role for uh, nearly four years. So my focus is, as I say, yeah, the US, the UK, and the rest of the world. Very much focused on boxing, fire sports, crossover boxing, wider sports also. But what takes up a hell of a lot of my time is right. is the boxing business. Just landed back from. Riyadh yesterday from obviously Bivol Baturbiev. Yeah, so my job in very simple terms is to try and um, try and entice people to our platform to enjoy the content that we have and, and stay for as long as possible. No, certainly. Keep, them, keep the avid viewers. Um, I guess in this interview though, we'll kind of specialise in the Misfits boxing, as well as channel's about. Um, big press conference today, the se Misfits' second pay-per-view of the year. Overall, from a zone standpoint, how's this year been in terms of the year of having Misfits on the on the subscription page on the zone compared to last year, so 2023 versus 2024, how do they compare? Year-on-year uh, -year growth is very good. I mean, that's what it's all about when you when you start new new ventures. Um, you know, cast your mind back two years ago, slightly longer, well, probably 26 months ago, maybe this uh, it was just an idea, um, and now here we are with some of the biggest stars in the space on our 19th show, 19th iteration. Um, we're very happy, still lots to do. We've by no means completed it, using a gaming term, but uh, I think that's a gaming term, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Too old for a gaming term. Is it in between us, Jay, going, I completed it, mate? Yeah, that's it, that's yeah. better, yeah. yeah. So, uh, no, there's, there's still lots more for us to do. Um, optimising our platform, uh, optimising the viewing experience. We're, you know, certainly for X Series, our audience are, you know, at the forefront of, of technology and streaming innovation we need to keep up with them we need to listen to them we're doing that so yeah i'm very happy with the last couple of years we've seen some fantastic growth considering it was as i say at ground level nothing to where we are now um but still lots to do and we're very focused on that yeah how does mrs boxing compare to the other promotions you've got on the zone in terms of matchroom boxing yeah. uh names them if i get any golden boy you got as well golden who boy. else have you got most valuable, most valuable um yeah. yeah we work with salita we work with gbm um, 28 promoters worldwide, so I'm not going to list them all. It would be a f very dull interview, but it's obviously the Wasserman guys, so Kala and Issa and the team, um, obviously started there, um, started in the traditional boxing space, so they understand the, um, you know, I suppose the the right situation, the governing bodies, etc., which obviously we still need to 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 conduct um, to ensure that we're safe, um, and then you obviously have. The proper loud side, MAMS, KSI, and, and, and the team to bring in the sprinkle of uh, the crossover boxing space. Um, and that, that is how we conduct. I mean, for me personally and, and my team, it's exciting to be going from, you know, undisputed, uh, you know, traditional boxing, as we call it, um, into, you know, huge, huge uh, crossover boxing. So it's exciting. It's very different. Um, in principle, the strategy is is the same. It's about it's about making it unique. It's about obviously with Misfits, it's exclusive to the zone. In a lot of other instances, some of our um, main shows are are shared with with some of our broadcast partners, which again is is fine with us, and we we learn to collaborate very well. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're really happy. We've got a great working relationship. And coming back to my previous point, there's a lot to learn, and they equally are not resting on laurels, so it's all good. So, which promotion, in terms of numbers wise? Um, it's public knowledge that Ellen Page, the highest concurrent viewers on that was 600k. That was put out on Twitter, so it's a number we can work with. Has any of our promotions hit a higher number of concurrent viewers on a non-pay-per-view show on The Zone this year, or has that been the highest? On platform? Yeah, on The Zone. Um, we're talking. Well, we have we have huge shows, right? We're mm -hmm. t talking about global pay-per-views. We had Fury Usyk this non -pay year. I said non-pay-per-view. Non-pay-per-view. Yeah. Well, even non-pay-per-views, we had Taylor Catchrell 2 earlier this year. Um, I'm not going to discuss what the exact viewership was for those. If they are public, then yeah. the guys can obviously go out. But we see, we see varied viewership. Um, obviously, the, like, these guys bring 
huge, huge numbers. I mean, that number that you just discussed there. Um, it's crazy, isn't it's it? A, it's a you mad number. For a second, 600,000 people. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's a, I mean, you know, that number would have been a, a concurrent number, right? There's people mm -hmm. dipping in and out as yeah, well. Some people, it's you it know, it's, it is peak. Yeah, it's a peak yeah. number. So, yeah, I mean, to be honest, we have a whole, um, a whole host of team within our within our data science uh, departments at the zone, which feeds into our marketing to understand viewership and performance. That's how we that's how we commercialise fights. Mm -hmm. To be candid, which is why I will struggle to discuss too much clarity with that with you on on uh, in this forum because it's how we negotiate rights fees for fights. Um, but the numbers oh, are very is that, good. Is that, so what, is that basically why no official, no one can ever really officially leak the pay per view numbers, or no promotion can ever say pay per view numbers? Because of sponsorship deals and numbers wise. Well, because well, because there's a, there's it's it's a it's a private business, right? right? Um, and and I it's, guess and wouldn't it's say to like a, a sweet shop owner or Morrison's or Tesco's, you would say how many chocolate bars did you sell in the first quarter of the year? You well, wouldn't say that, would you? I mean, so it's the same for the zone in terms of how many pay views they sold. Yeah, well, at even more basic level, I was brought up to not ask you how much money yeah. you earn in a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a pretty. I find it quite a rude question, not from you in this regard, <laughs> but you know, it's. Uh, you know, to ask somebody how much money they make or what their business model is behind closed doors is, you know, fair play. People can ask the question, but but know. asking how many, what the, the highest number of concurrent viewers on a non PPV show, yeah, 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 you can't work out money for that, so no, that should no. be fair. But but for you know, absolutely. But for us, as I say, we use we use that as a grounding to understand what is an efficient cost to be paying for yeah. events and how much obviously fighters get paid, etc. So, you know, we we spend a lot of time. We take a lot of pride in actually scrutinising that data to make mm -hmm. it fair. Because it's a very different audience, you know. We're talking about traditional boxing versus non-traditional. We have base shows, pay-per-views, you know, bigger, smaller shows. So the viewership varies. The fortunate thing for us being a global broadcaster is it's from all over the world. So um, it's uh, it's a nice varied mix, and we see little peaks and troughs. Mm -hmm. Certain places we see not so high numbers, and s certain places we see huge numbers, which is uh, which is what we're all about as a global business. Do you always have a s before a big show, before a big miss at the show? Do you have a set target? of the peak concurrent views you want to get to? Um, yes, we do. Um, more so, again, to work back on an efficiency basis to make sure that we're uh, washing our face commercially, shall I say, to make sure that the events are, you know, we're a, we're, we're a yeah. business. <laughs> um, in order to, you know, believe it or not, we need to make sure that these events are profitable, as you say, and we need to make sure that they make sense for, for us as a business and, and our promotional partners. Um, this isn't a, a vanity project that we've just got an endless pot of cash to just have fun with. Um, we're not Turkey over here. <laughs> we're just trying to have. We're I'm just joking, joking. Yeah. can't laugh at that. Uh, you right, just no. sign them. No, I'm laughing at someone <laughs> over there. Um, I'm joking. Turkey's good. He's good. We um, well, no, you know, we need to make sure that it's a. Um, we need to make sure that it's a sensible. Uh, it's a sensible commercial model, and that's that's uh, a big part of what we do, right? No, certainly. Um, and for next last year, there were three pay per views for Misfits or KSI. This year, there's only been two PPVs. Mm. How many PPVs do you reckon you're going to set up for next year? I must be honest with you, Fred. It doesn't really work like that. It's who who who's available to fight. Right. Um, I'm sure you can appreciate certain stars are on pay per view cards. It's the same with traditional boxing. Um, there are very few exceptions. Anthony Joshua, for example, last year fought on our platform twice as part of subscription because it was part of a new. Um, part of a new venture we don't have a minimum or a maximum oh, number really, it's yeah. it depends on the fights that need to be made and whether they make commercial sense if they make commercial sense to put on a subscription show we will absolutely do that we're a subscription business that's our priority um but often to make certain events i've said this many times to make certain events they have to be pay-per-view mechanic yeah um so let's see uh, um you know as you know quite a lot of our x-series shows have been part of subscription mm -hmm. wherever we can do that we'll continue to do that certain shows like this one, for example. I want the PPVs. The PPVs are good. The you good want shows. the PPVs? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they are, because it normally, hopefully, people will agree, it translates to quality in yeah. terms of, you know, not necessarily the quality of the fighters, because even on our sub-shows, we, we have great fights, but yeah. audience numbers, the volume of, uh, you know, the types of people that follow, say, JJ. Um, you know, JJ's a pay-per-view star, so, um, yeah, but it doesn't necessarily, it's not quite that black and white for us. And how many shows are you expecting to do next year? There would be about eight Misfits shows this year, I'm correct mm. in saying? Around the same. You would be about eight next year? Around the same number. Standard. Yeah, I mean, as always, depends on injuries, depends on the, um, 
you know, sometimes these guys don't like each other and don't agree on making fights, as, as you know, you know, this the space. Politi- right. you're, seeing, you're seeing the, the politics and professional boxing slowly creep over to this end of the spectrum. Well, absolutely, it's big money sport, yeah. big money sport. So, but we have a contracted um, uh, kind of uh, volume that we, we expect to get and we strive to get that. And eight, the number that, as you've said, is, 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 is what we're shooting towards. We'll, we'll aim to be getting as close to that as possible next year. Do you um, think you can aim to get higher than eight, or do you reckon eight is the well, max? I think, I, I think if, if you think about, we have 150 minimum of 150 fights a year, yeah. right? <laughs> um, you're laughing because you probably heard that before, right? No, no, no I'm laughing. I'm thinking it's a lot. Yeah, it's a well, lot of fights. So it's, I, I, is, that ju- is that just is that just a misfit? Is that just a misfit's case? Is that is that for across all promotions? No, it's all so all of our boxes. It's a million, uh, yeah, minimum of 150 fights um, a year, fight nights a year, and obviously a minimum of sometimes six to seven yeah, cards. Right, so we're talking a thousand fights. So. Um, that's the claim that we are very proud to have in market and we work extremely hard to try and get that. I don't want to be sitting in December next year talking to you and your, <laughs> your, you know, your counterparts and saying you only did 120, <laughs> so we need to work quite hard to do that. Um, sorry, I forgot what your question was. What was your question? No, no, it's good. I was asking about kind of shows for next year. Yeah, yeah. No, it's there'll interesting. Be lo- there'll be lots of shows. There'll be lots, there, there will be a lot of shows. We have to, um, to, get, <laughs> to get anywhere near that claim. That's blimey. It's a, it's a lot to ask for. Um, let's talk about... Going out different regions, mm. Misfits been uh, spent a lot of time in the U.S. this year. You, you guys have tried to crack the U.S. market mm. and kind of su- successfully done it in some parts, maybe not so in other parts, but mm. you've done well at kind of pushing the Misfits U.S. market this year. Um, are you explaining to net more? I know we go to Qatar as mm. well in November next year. Do you look to go to like maybe more European countries, Norway, Spain? I know Spain had a major boxing event. Like quite recently, actually, a major well, influence boxing event. Well, Big yeah, Prime well, sponsored it. I can't remember the, the name of it. Well, we had a on the zone just weekend just gone in Marbella we had the bare yeah, knuckle see. yeah which was which was very good um, you know very successful Conor McGregor Ben the Bain Davis fought he'll be hosting yeah. the presser yeah I thought walk around with a black eye poor guy I was, I was very nervous I know I get nervous but that one I was really nervous for him his bare knuckle good. did you think he was good <laughs> well he didn't win obviously <laughs> but I thought his technique I thought, was yeah, oh yeah I thought yeah but apart from getting knocked down five times, like I'm not being, I'm not being, dis- I'm not being disrespectful. But you know, I know Ben from the obviously the work that he yeah. does with us, and you know, I don't ever look at somebody and think size him up. But I didn't think that he would be quite as good as he was. No, he went for it. Credit to Ben, though. Shout out I to mean, Ben. He did go for it. Yeah, he did. It was great. Um, but he, yeah, he lost and got put down. But I mean, there is under no. I'm pretty sure you and I would in that, in that <laughs> position. I'm speaking speaking for myself. Maybe you're maybe you're tougher than the, than me. But um, but yeah. Um, Global regions, we're a global business, we're in over 200 markets. Um, you rightfully say US, US is a tough market. Mm. US is a tough market. It's a very different demographic, very different consumer behavior why, as why well. Why is the US so tough to crack? Because it's just so big. 40 times the size of yeah. the UK. <laughs> it's a lot more people to reach. Um, you know, uh, our awareness in the in the market, you know, in, in, in the US is very much in a traditional boxing space. We've obviously had the JJ Logan um, show a few years ago which did extremely well for us I was not in the boxing business I can't unfortunately claim any kind of uh, um, yeah pride towards that apart from it being you know on the zone Um, but yeah we will we will look we're we're always looking at market splits Australia for example always does very well for us for boxing um, traditional and crossover um, Eastern Europe as well Um, and as I say you know our philosophy is global sport so um, the answer is yes. I don't know where yet. We obviously work very closely with Kala Mams and the team to see where they are seeing kind of heat map hot, hot spots to go after, and we'll, if it makes sense, we'll do it. Can you see on the Zone app? Obviously, we can't see it, but statistics wise, looking at all the analytics, can you see all the different countries that purchase the PPV or where they're watching from? Yeah, that's our job. So, apart from the US and UK, where else, what other countries are the highest? I'm going to look at my statistics to be fair, but I think for me, Australia has always been quite big Australia, as well. Australia, New Zealand, Germany. Uh, the Nordics as, a, yeah, as an Nordic. entire region does does very well. Um, Poland, India for me is quite big as well. Yeah, India, India. I mean, a lot of it is based on the kind of obviously we're a streaming service and it's high high quality camera, so we we require you know quite strong infrastructure from a broadband perspective. Um, so um, yeah, I think uh, it, it's fairly consistent as say Australia, New Zealand, Germany. We see r- really strong numbers in Italy and Spain also, oh. given the rights that we have there. We have Serie A, we have La Liga over there. We've just acquired Ligue 1 in France. So in the markets where we have the biggest sport exclusively, um, is no surprise that that's a huge cross-promotional opportunity for us. And consequently, that's where we see buyers. So, um, but yeah, UK and US is, is kind of quite, quite far and away above. 
when you have a show in Spain or Italy or whatever, do you have to have like Italian commentators or do you like how does it work? You have translators? Yeah, we do. We have localized commentary. It's oh, a, right, okay. a yeah, a big feature of ours that we um so for example in the US when say Canelo Alvarez fights, for example, we have alternative commentary streams in in Spanish, obviously given his audience. Um it's something that we're we're very proud of doing. Um we spend a lot of time thinking about the talent that we get on in in the in the native tongue um and have alternative streams. Obviously it's not um multiple multiple languages it tends to be focused on if there's a star on the card who's going to bring in a a particularly large audience from certain region will ensure that we have that localized commentary um but again you know it's a cliche and it may sound a little bit um corny but you know the viewing experience is is so important to us to differentiate sport is such a uh you know competitive space there's so much sport out there we're very fortunate to have exclusivity with a lot of this but you know as you do with sport i'm sure sometimes if there's an event on on two platforms at the same time you'll see who you're going to be listening to mm. um so we take a lot of time into that yeah for next year obviously you see the view so the viewers so high in like the eastern countries in, in europe and australia do you reckon australia next year for misfits heading over there i know our beef was on the radar last year it was on the radar yeah i'm trying to think of where i'd like to go they had one for their show in berlin yeah where haven't i been fiji mm. yeah, fiji would be quite good the answer is yes the answer is we'll look at um we we'll look at any market that there's there's demand to your point on your last question we look at analysis and we can see the viewership we can see the uptake and as i say regardless of the i mean obviously there are spikes uh, when certain fighters certain talent are on cards in certain regions but it's the the top 10 are rel- is relatively set um and those are the markets that we look to explore um you know i'd love to take it globally it's a it's a global appeal we're a global business so there's absolutely no reason why we wouldn't it's just um you know when we're putting on shows as large as we are here in the UK and the US sometimes it's quite difficult to resist the urge to just continue to do that but we will yeah okay so what this then Jake Paul Mike Tyson biggest fight of the year in terms of numbers and across all of boxing Directly? yeah easily 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 in terms of numbers not in terms of like boxing hype but when you look at the Netflix numbers was it a big kick in the teeth for the zone not getting that fight no you sure that's that's the biggest fight of the year in your mind mm not necessarily I think what makes it so big is also the Netflix factor of it. Mm. But if you have a contract with MVP, then how come they can suddenly get qu- uh, switch over to Netflix? Because Jake Paul is is his own man, right? I mean, we we still have a we have a, a very good relationship with MVP. We work with um we work with them on a regular basis. You know, we put on multiple shows. We work with Jake many times. That fight was um something that was done directly with Netflix. Right. Um and I think a fight at that scale good luck to them you know and i think i think you're right it's going to be huge i'm being slightly facetious <laughs> so maybe it, it isn't going to be but in in all seriousness and jokes aside um i can't remember the word you used sorry but i'm you know we're not bitter we're not we're not we're not grumpy about it at all i can't remember the word you used frustrated maybe frustrated no i'm not frustrated no cuz okay i said kicking the teeth that's what i said certainly not kicking the teeth i've had a kick in the teeth for years but um no it's uh, it's not i i i will most likely watch if we don't have something on the yeah. same night and uh, and you know it'll be entertaining and you know it's 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 no doubt Netflix are in pretty much every household um in 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 the world so uh yeah a lot of people will watch not kicking the teeth we'll see it's for me it's sounds like a cliche but it's for me the fact that these huge global streaming services are partaking in in our sport of boxing mm-hmm. um and and feel that it's an opportunity for them to make money for them to um to reach new audiences because that's what we do day in day out so uh long may it continue is it fair from you guys at the zone that netflix are now coming into boxing no again it's uh, f- for me it just reassures that we're doing the right thing that we're investing a lot of capital into a space that that is clearly lucrative and can clearly make money and, and most importantly has growth um you know if it would just us doing it over and over again I'd probably would be more concerned of that because it would be like we're kind of doing this on our own yeah. is are we missing something but the fact that these guys obviously prime video as well you know who we collaborated with yeah, for sorry. Canelo Belanga um you know I wouldn't be surprised if more people partake in it and uh, and more power to it because we've been doing it for a long time we've got somewhat of a head start in terms of how to do it I can assure you it's not easy to put on live That's production I was saying I was saying it'd be interesting to see how Netflix put the show on 
Because I've I'm been doing. to like yeah to see how they to see the style they do. Are they do anything different? Well, I've no doubt yeah. they'll I've, I've no doubt they'll do a sterling job given their yeah, you know great given. Job. I was be curious well, but but but, it, but, yeah. but you know we've we've done some excellent shows. But we've done some not very good shows over the years, and I'm being very honest here, saying that it, you know that you look back and they haven't been bad shows. The consumer may not even notice, but for us, as perfectionists of broadcast, our broadcast team. There'll be some shows that they probably look back on and wince, maybe. Maybe like you look back on some interviews when you first did it and think, oh, what was I saying there? Or yeah, was it, you know. About two weeks ago. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't that long, surely. But, you know, you learn, you learn. And the whole idea is, and the reason why I have confidence in our proposition and why I don't react in a kick-in-the-teeth manner or a bitter manner is because I really, truly believe in our proposition. I think that we're the best at what we do. Um, you know, live sport, multi-sport, we, have, we literally broadcast thousands of events a week. I, my focus is on a very small part of the design business we translate that skill and that um, knowledge over into our boxing business and I think we do extremely well in it and um, you know the fact as I say that big businesses are investing in it good luck to them Um, maybe we'll collaborate in the future Um, but we're focused on ourselves and we're very happy with what we're doing certainly yeah and it's it's interesting I'll see how the show's gonna go I'll be there so yeah I'm looking forward to it yeah Um, okay just some common points before I let you go it's been a very long interview so Fred I have to sit back and watch every single second of it to make sure it's all good. Um, sure it will be. Sure it will be. <laughs> um, okay, come well, on, things then. For the start of next year, what have like some things you want to implement into Mrs. Boxing that you think could change and could improve it? Well, put me on the spot here. It's a question for Mams. I think he's the creative brains. Um, from a design, okay. From a design standpoint. Well, look, we're looking at um, from a from a broadcast point of view we have our fan zone experience which is an interaction something like watch alongs for example we've done many times before with I'm not sure if you've seen over the last couple of pay-per-view events for Anthony Joshua Daniel Dubois excuse me and um, the fight in the weekend just gone with uh, better be Evan Dimitri Bivol we did exclusive watch alongs with True Geordie with yeah, yeah. Uh, with talk sport as well so two very different audiences trying to you know speak to the numbers are crazy on True Geordie's run yeah they're amazing yeah. they're great and uh, you know it's good for us it's good for us to be you know kind of mixing with their audiences and showing that we're listening and we know what 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 people want to do so for me in the misfit space that is we're already speaking to an audience who are incredible like sometimes if you use aj dubois for example um you know our parents our aunties and uncle watch that and they probably have no idea maybe some of them what a watch along is obviously the x-series audience are very familiar with that viewing experience so we need to make sure it's very good from the start so I think in the background, us focusing on, on that. The other area for me is non-live content. You know, obviously YouTube undeniably is a hub of, of content. We'd, we spend a hell of a lot of time, effort, and, and money into our non-live. Uh, I want to get as many people onto the design platform to watch that, you know, our hype interviews, some of the stuff that you guys have been doing or you may have seen that we've been doing for the last seven hours here today before the press conference with the fighters. Um, how we can innovate in that regard and get people to to maybe come to, um, you know, the zone for their for their content one off. You know, that's that's something that's a big focus for us in 25 beyond the fight night innovations, which we very much kind of lean on the on the misfits guys like the two v ones and tag teams. Well, you guys did the six, do you guys still do that 60 days? You post on YouTube. It's that it's your version of the 24 seven back oh, in the 40 day. Days. 40 days. 40 days. Yeah, not that long. 60 is far too long. Um, yeah, we do. So 40 days is, is like a, a camp, uh, almost like a. it's taken from like a tr- uh, traditional boxers camp time, really. So, yeah, we did a really good 40 days for um, uh, Haney versus Ryan Garcia earlier this year. Um, we did one for, you testing me now, did one Terence Crawford in August as well. So, yeah, I mean, look, it needs to be, there needs to be a, st- a, a story there, not a 40 day story, but there needs to be a story with enough meat in there to make it because they're normally quite long form. Um, but we have a really great non-live team who, uh, are, you know, producers of with really strong backgrounds who are working on c- concepts and ideas um, to produce content. Um, we're not going to slow down at doing that, and we're going to put a lot of focus on improving it. All right, that's pretty good. Yeah, I always like the they always have the old mayor of a money running for around fifty percent in the twenty-four-seven. Yeah. Um, what was the other one? Yeah. The best. Uh, yeah, but Hoya, that's where that's where it really came into yeah. into play, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'll just forget the name. I'm sorry, I'm slightly jet lagged. I've forgotten the name of it. But it was a great, a great, uh, it was a great one back in ESPN back in the nineties. I'm a lot older than you, but I can remember. So, um, but yeah, no, we will. The answer to your question is yes. Not sixty days, forty days. Yeah. We'll yeah. <laughs> Maybe we will do sixty days. Maybe that could be your um, version. Yeah, long. We'll yeah. Two months. Yeah. yeah. Um, you you on the press conference panel today? Yes. 
you are. I am, yeah. I'm, get, I'm getting hoarse talking to you. I'm going to run out of things. Yeah, to ready say. to kick off. <laughs> Do you I reckon? Yeah. No, I don't think so. It won't be the version of KSI. Jim Makoski was sitting where you meant to be sitting, wasn't he? For the, the Prime Card press oh, conference. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad Poor I'm guy. Yeah. <laughs> he loved it. He, he, loved he looked like he was stressing. He had his hand in like he he his head like this. Yeah. I mean, look, he ducked for cover. He came out He came out smiling, so uh, yeah, fair play to him. I got a crash helmet. Always bring a crash helmet just in case. Yeah, I remember seeing him walk off stage and I was looking, yeah, very wise, very smart move, yeah, Joe. Yeah. But yeah, Alfie, as always, man, I do appreciate it. It's fun into some for the first time. Hopefully it's the first of many, of very many yeah, no, each, uh, that, each time. And yeah, it's nice asking different, talking about something else, different questions, rather than asking you who you're going to knock out or what's yeah, your prediction sure, for the fight. Uh, wouldn't be anyone in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you know, council tax or something like that. Yeah, some annoying member of the zone yeah. you don't like, you can't yeah. say. No, no, definitely not fully professional. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Awesome, cheers, mate.